Discord. Hello, everybody, and welcome to episode 47 of the In From Japan podcast, the podcast where we talk about the latest news on Japan-developed games and other things in relation to them. Available on YouTube, Spotify, Podbean, Google Podcasts, Apple Podcasts, and Amazon Music. Uh, I'm your host, Errol Moss, and with me, as always, is my co-host, Jason Corner. Hey, hey. And we're going to start, like we always do, with the Japanese games we've been playing. So, I finished Common Rider Memory of Heroes. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think I caught a bit of uh, your stream, I think, yesterday or the day before yesterday. And you said well, nothing? Well, I chatted in the chat. You didn't respond. Oh, I must have missed it. I must have missed it because Josh yeah. came in too and I saw that. Well, I was using my phone uh, for the okay. chat too. It's hard to multitask. Wait, does it, doesn't uh, the Twitch overlay have like the chat in the sidebar? Oh, I was using a, I was using the Elgato game capture and I don't know how to do it on there. So it's like I had a very basic like it just shows the game and my webcam mm. and that's it. Y- so I have to have you might want to invest in Streamlabs then. No, I have Streamlabs, but I was trying to figure it out, and it just wasn't it wasn't recognizing certain stuff. And I was like, okay, well, I'll just do the basic uh-huh. stuff. Okay. Right. So since like that's all I need for that. I stream. mean, I, it, I I'm guessing the PlayStation Five is far more capable than the PlayStation Four. So wouldn't the in the built-in streaming be good enough that you wouldn't need Elgato capture card? Well, the thing about that is, like, the whole just, like, block scenes or, like, just it makes it easier to switch between games if, I don't know, I haven't, I'll, I'll experiment with it, mm. I guess. Um, All right. Anyway, about the actual game. Mm. <laughs> so, it's a lot easier for me now with all the different uh, forms uh, each common Rider had. Well, there are not... There are like eight different common riders. You, uh, them, I may be getting that number wrong, but there are the three main ones on the cover, and then there are like um, several other ones you can mm-hmm. play as. All the other ones are a lot more limited than the main three, but they still have their like uh, their different abilities. Are they limited because you? Well, uh, like, are they limited by design, or you haven't upgraded them yet? No. Oh no! By design, oh, okay. they're limited. That's a bummer. Yeah. Um, yeah, and I'm trying to go for the platinum, but I have to level them all up and get all their skills. So I'm going through the campaign mm-hmm. again. Uh, I beat the survival mode on every difficulty. Okay. And then, um, uh, what else? Oh well, the on extreme it gives you a, it gives you a, an equip item that makes you have max rp and max ex energy which means you can f- like have unlimited form change and unlimited super mm-hmm. mode and super mode makes you invulnerable because it's temporary so you can pretty much make yourself invincible <laughs> so basically god mode kind of it's still a bit like it's still a grind mm-hmm. because you still have to get uh, all those enemy codes t- to get uh, to get all the skills and then level up all the common Riders separately and stuff but I'm getting there okay well um, I, I, I don't know how it m- how it must feel to play it but to me it seemed fairly easy um, kind of like uh, yes. a muso game or what what did it remind me of? God hand? Not God Hand. Like it, it, it definitely looks Ugh. like a platinum game, but with less panache, um, less flair. Ju- yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. I mean, Common Rider has a lot of flair. I mean, the game itself, just, just not. Yeah. Yeah. Like the environments are pretty bland mm-hmm. looking. Oh, okay. I, I'm, I'm guessing you got your money's worth then. Oh yeah, definitely. Okay. I hope they continue with the style because. I mean, not that the other Common Rider games are bad, but they're more mm-hmm. Musou likes, and I just like to see them do more with this okay. style. Okay. Um, what else have you been playing then? 
Yakuza 7. As pretty much Finally. our whole timeline has been. So, how are you liking it? Yeah. It's, uh... It's great so far. Uh, I actually... You know, funny thing is, I, I started following Ichiban's voice actor, Kaiji Tang, on, mm-hmm. on Twitter. And he... I noticed he was streaming because he... He's been doing these Twitch streams of just like touring mm-hmm. Yokohama, and there weren't that many people in his stream. I expected like you know a bunch of people. There were like bar- there wasn't that many people. So I went in and said like, "Hey, really like your uh, performance." And he's like, "Oh, hey, thanks." So I mean, that was cool. I mean, uh, uh, I think he's one of the newer voice actors. I want to say, or yeah. Uh, this i mean he's been in it for a while but this is one of his like more prominent roles yeah biggest roles probably okay. yeah so i'm guessing he's still building up his following it's kind of like uh yeah. dice i'm just kind of shocked between i'm always shocked between like twitter and, and mm-hmm. twitch like the the what do you call mm-hmm. the contrast i mean i guess with, with twitch you have to be involved you have to sit down and actually watch someone's yeah, stream with, with twitter it's you follow them and every once in a while when you, you just yeah, scroll exactly. through so yeah i think i think that's it i, I hope i'm not so- sounding too and unkind well there's also just the fact that a lot of people are probably playing yakuza 7 with japanese voices as um, well. there is that but it, it having a dub is great for accessibility yeah, they did, uh, at least what I've noticed is it seems they've tried to match the lip movements mm-hmm. to the to the language, and I appreciate that. They did the same thing for Dragon Quest XI, I yeah. believe. But how are you liking the game, then? Uh, I, I like it. I like it a lot so far. I am still still want to do more, uh, unlock more mm-hmm. mini games that I haven't gotten the chance to do yet, like the, the dragon cart and the karaoke mm-hmm. stuff. Um, but it's, uh, there, I don't know. I, <laughs> I don't know if I could say anything that, that like hasn't already been said by our guests I mean, I mean, uh, in the past. If, if it's been said, it's fine. Just, just, I'm a little, I'm a little surprised by the, I'm still a little surprised by the time-based uh-huh. attacks, but that kind of makes me like it better because, you know, I really like original Paper mm. Mario. <laughs> so... <laughs> Which is surprising because I have another friend who also loves this game, and he is not a fan of Paper Mario style gameplay, but he's a big Yakuza fan. So I'm just like, huh, that's interesting. I mean, Paper Mario is not the only game that did timing based combat. No, and it doesn't do it the same uh-huh. way necessarily because the way Paper Mario does it is a little more, uh, I don't want to say complicated. Uh-huh. Not not comp, uh, but it uh, that's not the right word exactly. But you know. It's like, it's more, the timing in Yakuza 7 seems a little more straightforward, <laughs> whereas Paper Mario, I feel like you kind of have to learn what to do, uh-huh. like, like a little more, um, well, you, you c- like when you have to pull the analog stick a certain direction, like a slingshot or like a- Yeah, like I, I, I'm guessing Yakuza feels more like uh, a quick time event you'd find in any other game, whereas Paper Mario feels more like a toy where you have to wind up the character bef- before they yeah, attack. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, I'm, guess- I'm guessing that's, uh, that's, uh, that's that might be fair. Uh, how are you liking the story? Because a lot of people are raving about it. The story's not like hasn't really gotten anywhere uh mm-hmm. yet. I, I'm on like chapter four. So you know Ichiban's been out of jail for a while. He's in mm-hmm. Yokohama. I have two other party members, Adachi and mm-hmm. Nanba. And uh I forgot we're like investigating why we're like investigating some retirement home that's doing shady stuff with the local yakuza in mm-hmm. yokohama so that's i mean that was kind yeah. of interesting <laughs> but but like there's no like the main story like the like this seems like a side story that'll probably eventually lead mm-hmm. into a bigger thing but like the the main main story hasn't really you know picked up yet if yeah. you know what i mean it, this is kind of like a like a building like another a thing for build up i'm guessing well uh <clears throat> I'm, I'm i'm happy to hear you're enjoying it so far and f- 
from what I can gather from reading our timeline, it's that it's resonating with a lot of people and in different ways. Like Liana Ruppert from Game Informer, yeah, she wrote about how how it struck a chord with her because she also experienced being homeless. And in Yakuza Seven, it's it's centered around people that have been homeless and to shed a sort of positive light on their experiences um and their struggles yeah it's it's kind of heartwarming Mm -hmm. to see um and not only that but it's also cool to see you know a jrpg with protagonists that aren't just you know teenagers yeah because i think it was an old split screen episode of the the kodaku split screen podcast um back when the 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 main trio or the the former trio were the hosts and Jason Schreier said that that's kind of by design in most RPGs because in media, popular media in Japan, childhood or adolescence is seen like the golden period of, of life. And yeah. everything after 20 mm-hmm. years is kind of uh, kind of not fun and, and, and something you <laughs> don't want to think about because you're slowly dying probably uh, so that's why a lot of manga and, and and a lot of video games are centered around teenagers or young adults but it is it, yeah also on that note of older characters shout out to the manga series kaiju number eight where the main character is 30 <laughs> yeah i mean they're not they're not super rare but it seems like no. But they like, like to focus on the younger crowd. Mm-hmm. Seems to be getting... It, it's getting a little more accepted to have older characters a yeah. bit. Oh, um, by the way, did you see the Archipel uh, documentary on... I did not. I have so not I, watched I, it yet. Just because maybe spoilers. No, there, there aren't any spoilers. I watched like 30 minutes oh, of okay. it. No. How, how long is it? Wait, let me look it up real quick. I thought that's what that I thought that's how long it was. Wait, they vary in size. Oh no, this is twenty five minutes, and I watched about eighteen minutes, and so far no spoilers. Yeah. Okay. But it's 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 a really interesting watch, and it's also going through the origins of Yakuza and what uh, Toshihiro Nagoshi had to go through to get it greenlit, and it's really fascinating. You kind of also get get the idea mm. behind a lot of the, the design and and yeah and wh- why the characters are the way they are and it's a really fascinating look i highly recommend it i'll have yeah. to check that out uh, uh yeah. oh i did do uh, real quick i did do the fitness boxing mm-hmm. 2 demo and it didn't feel that much better or worse than fitness boxing one the only thing that was weird was that fitness boxing one demo had let you do more like it didn't even have any stretches in in the demo for two and i'm like you should at least have one to to give people a taste of like i don't know Mm -hmm. how the game is that's my only thing with that because it was just i just tried it real quick before the podcast um do you think you'll be diving into it like like as i'm trying to decide whether I'm going to get that or Ring Fit, but of course Ring Fit does not have a demo mm-hmm. and Fitness Boxing is cheaper. I might just wait to see if somebody reviews Fitness Boxing too and then like see what what reviews say. Well, I mean, Ring Fit is kind of tethered to the the titular ring, so I think that's going to be very yeah. difficult to have a demo out on the eShop. Yeah. Um but it's also because it's more expensive, you know, and gotta save money <laughs> for other for other games. I mean, <laughs> if if uh, well, from what I've seen on 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 Twitter, it's that people are feeling like they are getting a workout in, so it might be worth the investment. Yeah. What have you been playing? Yeah. So. I have been playing, um, what have I been playing? That's a good question. I have been playing Yakuza 0 a bit, um, busy week, so not much time. Um, Yakuza 0, I've also been playing Final Fantasy 4, 
I'm not that far into it. In about an hour. I just got Rydia in my party. She's the summoner. Um, besides yeah. that, not much. Uh, so I can't really report much on these things. I, I do want to say that Final Fantasy IV, specifically the DS version that got ported to mobile and Steam, um, that's the that's the version that that's um, canon to me because that's the first one I played and not the SNES version. So I'd, I'd like to say publicly that I I really love the chibi art style. So come at me, fight me in my mansions. <laughs> yeah. Um, besides that, Yakuza Zero does have an interesting. Uh, development in its story. I don't want to spoil it because uh, it's it's really something you should experience yourself. Um, I mean, I mean, yeah, I plan on playing. I it mean, at just, some point. just hearing about it, and and you're gonna think, oh, it's 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 a very silly game, and there's no much that's, there's not much substance to it. But once you really go through it and see the depth of the characters, you're you're gonna be amazed, especially. Majima story. Um, I'm I'm in Majima story at the moment, and I can really tell um, why he resonated with so many people and why he's their favorite character of the series. So, yeah, I'm I'm eager yeah. to see more of it. Also, I got Fire Emblem Three Houses back. Um, I like borrowed it from a friend, so maybe I'll be losing time and sleep to that. Uh, more to follow next week. But yeah, that that's yeah. It. Okay, so now we're gonna move on to our uh, J list with the recent video game related entertainment news. Uh, we have first we have the world as with you. The animation begins airing April twenty twenty one. Uh, second trailer plus a new key visual featuring the Reapers. This is by Sal Romano over at Gamatsu. The World Ends With You animation will be begin airing in April 2021, Square Enix announced, and then there's a visual and a trailer, and that's uh, that's it. Okay. <laughs> um, then we got the Monster Hunter release date moved up to Christmas. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm guessing is, there's not uh, much else uh, in theaters at the moment, so why not? Yeah. Paul, Paul W.S. Anderson's upcoming Monster Hunter movie based on Capcom's popular video game, oh, this is by Blake Hester over at Game Informer, franchise of the same name, it will now be released on December 25th, 2020. Sony Pictures announced today. This is the fourth announced release date for the movie. Originally slated for September 4th. Uh, moved to April 23rd, 2021. Moved again to December 30th, and now December 25th. The movie's December 4th release date in territories such as China and Europe remains unchanged. As of right now, the movie is only announced for a release in theaters. Uh, hopefully it comes to streaming fast. Uh, who's the publisher of the, of the movie? Because... I don't know. <laughs> wait, let me look it up. I mean, it's, it's really dependent on who publishes the movie. Oh, Sony. Hmm. Sony does have a lot of streaming services, but I don't think any of them would count as quote-unquote premium streaming services. Um, so... Exclusive on Crackle? No, I don't think it's going to come, come on Crackle. <laughs> <laughs> At least not anytime soon. I mean, it, it would be great if um, they said, hey, it's, it's an exclusive movie only on PlayStation Plus. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that would be great. Um... Also, the Monster Hunter movie director will talk about the film on Twitch. This is by Jenny Lotto over at Silicon Era. People will not only have the chance to learn more about the Monster Hunter movie directly from people who helped create and shape it, but will be able to ask questions about it too. Capcom will hold a Twitch stream on December 2nd, 2020. People who show up for the one-hour presentation, which will be held at 5 p.m. Pacific Time, 8 p.m. Eastern, will hear from three influ influential people. One is Monster Hunter director Paul W.S. Anderson, who was only involved with... Who was only involved with the film? What? <laughs> Monster Hunter series producer Ryozo Sujimoto and Monster Hunter World executive and art director K 
Taname Fujioka will also appear. It seems that the content of the stream will be divided into two parts based on a tweet from the series official Twitter accounts. Sujimoto and Fujioka's portion will be an interview presumably talking about both the games and the upcoming film. The portion involving the Monster Hunter movie director will be a fan Q&A session where people who show up might have their questions picked by an influencer named Social Dissonance. That sounds like a <laughs> video game. Sounds like a lot. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and then our last piece of Jane Lewis News. Uh, Danganronpa 10th Anniversary Commemorative Book Pre-Orders Open. It's, uh, this is by Sato for Silicon Era. Ten years ago on this day, the Danganronpa series made its debut for the PSP in Japan. Fans can now order a special Danganronpa 10th Anniversary comm- Commemorative Book Set in Japan. The book set is titled Danganronpa Decade. Spike Chunsoft describes the book as a deluxe commemorative book packed with 10 years of gratitude for the fans. If you're wondering just how deluxe it is, it's quite massive. It comes with four books, A4 size, and over 1,500 pages. Each book has a category. The first is for characters, the second for artwork, the third is for storyboards, and the fourth is a look at the series in retrospect with interviews and, a f- and fan survey results. It'll feature numerous titles um, and also also contain brand new info on the Danganronpa 3 The End of Hope's Peak High School anime that aired in 2016 and 17. It's, uh, it, it can be yours for 17,000 yen plus tax in Japan. <laughs> uh... Fans will have until some time in February 2021 to pre-order the Danganronpa Decade book, and it'll ship out around the end of March. Copies purchased from the Ebiton Spike Chunsoft store will include a random character stand. All pre-orders will also include character death portraits. <laughs> well, that's something. Now, I wonder if our friend Callie is going to buy that. <laughs> uh... All right, so next is recommended content. Content other than news from the past week listed out. Links in the description. So we have 30 years ago, the Super NES, Final Fantasy IV, and A Broken Jaw Changed My Life by Nadia Oxford over at US Gamer. Did, did you read this one? Uh, no, I only heard about it on the Acts of the Blood God podcast, but I do want to read it. Yeah, I think... Yeah, I, th- I thought it was really good. I, I, I really... It, it kind of helped because <laughs> I had like similar issues growing up well, your jaw got broken um no i mean they they thought uh there was a point where they thought about doing oh, wow. that <laughs> but we decided not to <laughs> um why gaming needs this accessibility over at GameSpot. broken ps5s and xbox series x's should you be worried uh generation next podcast over at GameSpot. Or not podcast. Well, it is a it's podcast, a video series. It's it's not a podcast. It's a video yeah. series. Uh, why the Hyrule Warriors: Age of Calamity team made a Breath of the Wild prequel by Brian Shea over at Game Informer. Masahiro Sakurai shares his impressions on the PlayStation Five by Skite by Kite Stenbook. <laughs> Skite <laughs> Kenbook. I don't think we want to give uh, new names. Kite Kite, Kite Stenbook over at Silicon Era. Override 2 Super Mech League Ultraman gameplay trailer by Sao Romano, Gamatsu via YouTube. And video game remakes are better than film remakes by Ben Reeves over at Game Informer. That that tracks. <laughs> um, now it's time for the news rundown. And I'll let uh, the bearer of bad news, the Shinigami, uh, take it away. Bankai. Okay, so... We got a weird one this week. Um, the Crown Prince of Saudi Arabia is now SNK's largest shareholder. There's an update that says 33.3% share purchased, not the entire company. This is by Damien McFerrin for Nintendo Life. Um, well, the original story is, well, here's a story we didn't think we'd be writing this morning. According to reports coming out of the Far East, thanks to Resetera, 
video game veteran SNK, famous for properties such as Samurai Showdown, Metal Slug, and King of Fighters, has been purchased by the Saudi-based electronic gaming development company EGDC. The deal, which has been signed today, transfers all SNK stock to EGDC. This has since been uh, corrected to a third of the shares. Um, however, it is reported that the agreement. Still a lot. Yes, uh, it's still a lot. Uh, it is reported that the agreement has been 100% funded by the Saudi Crown Prince Mohammed bin Salman bin Abdul Aziz Al Saud, who is the largest shareholder of EGDC. It would appear that the acquisition of SNK is part of the Prince's Saudi Vision 2030 program, which seeks to diversify the traditionally oil led Saudi econ- um, economy via sectors such as tourism and technology. Uh, it should also be noted the Crown Prince is a controversial figure in global politics and is accused of having a hand in the assassination of Washington Post journalist and Saudi dissident Jamal Khashoggi in 2018. He is also accused of detaining and torturing human rights activists and actioning the mass execution of 37 civilians in 2019. That's a big yikes. I repeat, a very big yike. So, uh... That's a no for me. I'm I'm never buying an SNK game again. Or playing an SNK game again. Uh well, you could still play them if they're the like retro versions. You yeah, know what no, I mean? No. It, if they're if they're used, nah. if it's if nah. it's like a Super Nintendo thing, nah, you still can. I'm not saying it's tainted. <laughs> no, I'm not I'm not doing it. I'm not doing it. But and you know what else you could play instead though that I think it deserves a mm-hmm. re release? Tatsunoko versus Capcom. Yeah, but good luck convincing Capcom and Tatsunoko of uh, re-releasing that. What? <laughs> One day. One sure. day. <laughs> we all have to believe. Uh, okay, that was the um, bad ish news, and now. F- yeah, that got a little intense. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, I was kind of taken aback when I read it. Like, the Crown Prince of Saudi Arabia bought a game company, or at least majority shares in a game company yeah that's something you don't read every day you also don't read every day that he's been held well not held responsible he's been formally accused of being responsible of murder and torture so yeah yeah Yeah. anyways in other news that doesn't have to do with that 2020 is gonna 2020 Uh, um yakuza series 15th anniversary Uh, live stream set for december 8th this is Part of the good news, people. I repeat, part of the good news. This is also by Sal Romano for Gamatsu. Sega will host a Yakuza Series 15th anniversary special live stream on December 8th from 8 p.m. to 10 p.m. Japan Standard Time, the company announced. You will be able to watch it on YouTube. The live stream will look back on 15 years of Yakuza series as well as make announcements about future developments. Huh. Presenters include Takaya Kuroda, Kazuma Kiryu's voice actor, Kazuhiro Nakaya, Ichiban Kasuka, voice actor, Toshihiro Nagoshi, Yakuza Series General Director, Daisuke Sato, uh, Ryoga Gotoku Studio Representative slash Producer, Masayoshi Yokoyama, this is Yakuza Series Chief Producer, and host Yurika Tachibana, hostess actor in Kuruyo to Ryoga Gotoku Ashura Hen, and more. Sega is seeking users to participate in live stream in real time. Uh, in real time surveys via Zoom, you can apply here until November twenty sixth. That's the weirdest thing I've ever read. But okay, uh, what do you think the future announcements will be? Uh, I saw some stuff saying that it's going to be a prequel uh, with one of the characters from Yakuza 7. I forgot I forgot who. Um, again, I'm not that far in the game, so I don't know everybody's name yet. Uh, <laughs> uh, hmm. But I don't know. We'll, we'll see what hmm. it is. I mean, you got to remember that in the, Yakuza 7 came out last year in Japan or at the beginning of this year? I think last year. Let me look it up. Yeah, but there there was that uh, Yakuza game. It's still fast. Uh, set in the Middle Ages, so maybe they'll 
Oh, the the feudal. Oh, wait, you're not talking about the samurai. You're not talking about the samurai. Yeah, I'm one, talking right? about that one. Yeah, uh, Ishin, Ishin, yeah, I think. Uh, I want Yakuza Dead Souls Kiwami. It's the zombie spinoff. Well, who was it that said it wasn't that good? Was it uh, Imran Khan? Several people. Several. So people. why do you want it? <laughs> but that's why. It- but that's why it, that's just a, another excuse for it to have a remake. I don't think that's how you. I don't so think that's why good. you remake stuff. Ah. Uh, <laughs> okay. That's Ishin. Like a Dragon is. Look, if Sega won't give me House of the Dead ports, the least they could do is. Well, give me you that. could find those games in an arcade, I guess. Um, January 16th. Uh, you, I'm not going to an arcade. Arcades aren't doing so well lately. I don't well, know about that. Then. <laughs> um, Yakuza <laughs> 7 was released January 16, 2020, in Japan. So, uh, this year. Okay. Next up, we have. Neo, the world ends with you, announced for PlayStation 4 and Switch. Um, Square Enix has announced Neo, the world ends with you, for PlayStation 4 and Switch. It will launch in summer 2021 worldwide. This is by Sal Romano for Gamatsu. Um, well, you can click on the article for the full overview. I don't, I don't feel right about reading it all over again. Um, you can find a trailer. Um, I think it looks really good. Um, I like how they managed to realize the, the visuals of a DS game in a 3D setting. Um, it, well, obviously it will remind people of Persona 5 and it even reminded me of Persona 5, but it's, it's a very different stylized take and I like it so far. The only thing I'm wondering is, I got called out, come again? <laughs> On kind of funny no. games, damn. No, not that. Um, <laughs> I said Tim was like, Tim was saying it. Oh, it looks kind of generic, and I'm like, with that art style, okay. And then he he got me, he got me, and I was like, I should have just said, can you elaborate on that, Tim? Because he did. He's like, let I me mean, elaborate. It, <laughs> I was it like, doesn't okay. look generic. I hadn't had my coffee it, yet. It doesn't look generic. I think he meant like the ba- like regarding the backgrounds. I think a little no, bit. No, not even that. It's stylized. It's not generic. <laughs> I, I need to... I don't remember what exactly uh-huh. he said, but he did elaborate himself a little bit, and I was like... And, I, and then later I just tweeted, like, hey, I still disagree with nah. you, but that's okay. Nah, I think I think <laughs> it was a bad take. Nah. <laughs> I just should have... I just should have worded it better when I said it in no, the it, chat. <laughs> I just hadn't had my... I hadn't had my yeah, coffee yet. Excuses, excuses. Um, <laughs> it should also be mentioned that Takehiharu Ishimoto... Um, the composer of the first game will be returning to handle the music for this one. Okay, next up is all you. Okay, Fantasy Star Online 2 reveals Yakuza, Like a Dragon, and Sword Art Online uh, crossovers Don't in Japan. Us. People like Sword Art Online. <laughs> I, uh, well, I like shouldn't. Sword Art Online. Well, you shouldn't. <laughs> You're allowed to like what you like. Not past episode sure. seven. Sure, buddy, sure. <laughs> this is by Giuseppe Nova over at Twinfinite. Today, SEA hosted a new reveal event dedicated to the Japanese version of Fantasy Star Online 2, and it came with a quite extensive look to the f- to future updates. We get to see the trailers of the... Th- wow, there are a lot of errors here. Trailers of the three parts of the next update that will be released in Japan in early December, late December, and early January. Among other things, we got to see a collaboration with the Sword Art Online franchise in Part 2, and one with Yakuza Like a Dragon in Part 3. We also get to see the Christmas decorations and goodies for this year and much more. As usual, it's relevant to mention that the content showcased is coming to the Japanese server, but it's likely that most or all of it will also be released on Western servers at some point. Uh, and then, uh, and just a reminder, there's also Gridman stuff. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, also, uh, regarding Fantasy Star Online 2, New Genesis official broadcast set for December 19th. Uh, hang on. This is by Sour Mono for Gamasu. Uh, a follow-up to the Tokyo Game Show 2020 online broadcast. 
Sega will air a pre-recorded Fantasy Star Online 2 New Genesis official broadcast on December 19th at 3.30 a.m. Pacific Time, 6.30 a.m. Eastern Time, and 20.30 Japan Standard Time, the company announced. You will be able to watch it on YouTube in English and on YouTube and Periscope in Japanese. The broadcast will feature new info and act as a follow-up to the the Fantasy Star Online 2 New Genesis introduction program that aired during Tokyo Game Show 2020 online in September. So look forward to that. Yep. Okay. Um, My turn. Xbox's Phil Spencer thinks apathy is the biggest threat to both Microsoft and Sony. This is by Matthew Olsen for US Gamer. Kudos to an interviewer who actually gets head of Xbox, Phil Spencer, to say an unequivocally harsh thing about Microsoft's competitors. In a new interview with The Verge, Spencer even says nice things about the ways that Sony and Apple work with Microsoft. Even though the PS5 is launching in opposition to two new Xboxes and iOS's, iOS makers keeping Game Pass off the, ga- of the App Store. That's a weirdly formulated sentence. On the former point, Spencer offers an interesting perspective on today's console competition, one a bit deeper than his usual friendly outlook. While discussing the notion of toxic competition in the console space, quote, I just really despise it, he says. Spencer says that the Xbox and PlayStation have a common competitor, and in this case, he's not pointing to the game streaming efforts from Google and Amazon. Quote, I don't think we have to see others fail in order for us to achieve the goals, Spencer explains. That's some kind of kumbaya, that's not some kind of kumbaya thing, it's actually real. We're in the entertainment business. The biggest competitor we have is apathy over the products and services and games that we built. That's a claim back up by actual data Spencer has. Earlier in the interview when discussing the decision to launch both the Xbox Series X and Series S simultaneously, Spencer says it was motivated by a perceived need to grow gaming by getting new people into the Xbox ecosystem. Um... I'll finish it with this quote. I'd say in the console space over the last four or five years, most of the growth that the industry has realized has been growth per user, not growing the number of console users that are out there, he says. It's actually been a fairly fixed number over the last decade. It can't just be a fight over the same customers that we've all seen every year. Your average age of your customer goes up by one every year because it's the exact same demographic that's just moving with you. Um, I should note that this probably stems from uh, a podcast interview diverged with Phil Spencer. Um, Resetera has a thread on this. I highly recommend looking into it. And um, concerning the last quote, it's pretty much the blue ocean strategy that Nintendo employed uh, back in the Wii DS era. Um, it, it, was, it was basically the same thing. Uh, I think it was Reggie Fizeme that says we keep spending the same amount of time, the same budget on the same gamer and we're not growing our market. So we have to look at who yeah. else is out there. Who else haven't we served yet with our services? Mm-hmm. Um, and yeah. I think Xbox is uniquely positioned to fill that role this time this time around with the the series s being an affordable entry point into this generation and with xbox game pass um offering you so much value for a a certain amount of money and uh, with xbox uh, streaming on mobile platforms and computers via browsers and what have you it's all more a question of where can I get my Xbox service than where do I buy an Xbox? And it's it's really good to see that gaming has become more democratized and uh, I dare say accessible. Oh, so yeah. Uh, mm-hmm. yeah, it's a good thing. Definitely. It's definitely a good thing. Okay, next up is Microsoft hints at turning Xbox into an app for your TV. This is um, The Verge, and it's being reported by Tom Warren. Microsoft is in its early phases of rolling out its xCloud streaming services or service on mobile devices, but TVs are the next logical step. 
In an interview with The Verge, Xbox chief Phil Spencer has revealed we'll likely see an Xbox app appear on smart TVs over the next year. I think you're going to see that in the next 12 months, said Spencer when asked about turning the Xbox into a TV app. I don't think anything is going to stop us from doing that. Spencer previously hinted at TV streaming sticks for Microsoft's xCloud service last month, and his latest hint suggests we might see similar hardware or an Xbox app for TVs during 2021. Microsoft is currently working on bringing xCloud to the web to enable it on iOS devices, and this work could or would naturally allow xCloud to expand to TVs, browsers, and elsewhere. I mean, um, with xCloud coming to Chrome, or browsers, I should say. Um, it should be fairly possible to have it on TVs. Well, smart TVs, that is, because they also have built-in browsers. And um, probably every modern TV comes with a streaming app or many streaming apps. So low barrier, I guess. Um, but we'll see. Uh, next up is you. Sorry, I had to do something real quick. Um, yeah, the TV thing just seems like they're just trying to put Xbox anywhere they can. I mean, I can't blame them. I do the same thing. Game Pass on your fridge. I mean, it's the new Game Pass is the new Skyrim. Well, people have you heard it here first. People have gotten it to work on a fridge, so. Game Pass on uh, on your Alexa. I don't know how that would it work. It wouldn't. It really wouldn't. <laughs> uh, yeah, so Microsoft is working to identify and resolve performance issues in Xbox Series X games. Are you Microsoft? Yes, but it's not magic. It won't happen immediately. <laughs> A Microsoft spokesperson says that developers are just now scratching the surface of what the new Xbox consoles can do. This is by Matthew Olson for US Gamer. Uh, any veteran developer will tell you that the raw power of a console can only go so far without good tools and great optimization. And that lesson is being borne out in the early comparisons between Xbox Series X and PlayStation 5 titles. While the specs on paper put Series X ahead of PS5 for GPU, CPU, and memory bandwidth, it looks like the PS5 currently has an overall edge on performance, I'll say. Without commenting on why or how Sony's leading in these games, Microsoft says it's looking toward improvements for a handful of optimized titles on its new consoles. Yes, the onslaught of precise and informative comparisons produced by our friends at Digital Foundry on a number of new cross-platform titles, most notably Assassin's Creed Valhalla and Devil May Cry 5 Special Edition, show PS5 leading Series X in performance with quality settings appearing to be more or less equal for those who picked up the newest top of the line Xbox because of the extra teraflops it has over the PS5. This is a head scratcher. And there's the spokesperson says we are aware of performance issues and a handful of optimized titles on Xbox Series X S and are actively working with our partners to identify and resolve the issues to ensure an optimal experience. As we begin a new console generation, our partners are just now scratching the surface of what next-gen consoles can do, and minor bug fixes are expected as they learn how to take full advantage of our new platform. We are eager We are eager to continue working with developers to further explore the capability of Xbox Series X slash S in the future. Uh, then there's a bunch of other stuff. Uh, but yeah, it's, it's kind of like, well, yeah, it's the beginning of a generation. That we don't know all the developers don't know the, all the ins and out of outs of these consoles yet um yeah i mean they're barely scratching the surface surface i guess um it's also the f it's also I the mean, first generation where um an ssd is a focal point in the design of a video game yeah uh, whereas in the past you had um well spinning discs to contend with so um yeah. i guess we'll see the 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 example I like using is, and I don't think they were, I don't know if they were that mm -hmm. many years apart, but the graphics between Kingdom Hearts One and Kingdom Hearts Two, mm -hmm. um, because I played them my junior year of high school, so like 2010 mm -hmm. back to back, mm -hmm. and I was just like amazed at the graphical difference. I was like, wait, mm -hmm. what? <laughs> like it definitely looked better, sure, but I was more amazed by how 
much better it played because they they added so much to the controls. Oh yeah, but I'm just saying like I'm just saying like in terms Graphical of fidelity. Like, okay. Yeah, and and like what how how things are at the beginning of the generation and how things are yeah. by the end. For me, that um, example would be Halo One to Halo Two, because it's it's still within mm. the same console generation. But Halo Two is so much improved from Halo One that it 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 kind of doesn't <laughs> seem real. And then Halo Three to Halo Four, yeah. I mean Halo Four was really pushing the Xbox Three Hundred and Sixty, so uh, it, it's it's really mm. I, I think a, a matter of time before we see. The, th- the next thing that wows us um yeah. yeah um soon soon next up we have playstation's jim ryan says there's news to come on their response to xbox game pass this is by eric van allen for us gamer the new generation of consoles is out but a lot of talk around them has been about their services one of the early points of contention in this generation seems to be subscription services like xbox game pass and sony interactive entertainment ceo jim ryan is saying that playstation could have more to come soon about its own plans in an interview with tass tass okay ryan was asked about how sony will respond to microsoft's game pass The subscription service allows access to a library of games on Xbox uh, consoles and PC across several generations. And the quote follows, there's actually news to come, but not just not today, Ryan says. Uh, He follows with, we have PlayStation Now, which is our subscription service, and that is available in a number of markets. Not my market, but uh, I digress. Um... Yeah, so that's that. I think what's going to happen is they're going to have kind of like a library system where they'll have a selection of games, but you can only download and play. Let's say they have 10 as a selection, but you can only download and play three or five. So you, you, you'd probably... I thought their response to Game Pass would just be like expanding the PlayStation Plus collection. Um... They could, uh, but then again, Jim Ryan is no fan of putting exclusives day and date on a streaming service. Um, oh, I don't know if day and date, but I just yeah. Mean, but like, I, I was gonna say he'd probably just be filling it with um, older exclusives and older second party titles. Um, so I don't know. How about mm-hmm. we turn? How about you turn it into PlayStation's virtual console, and you know. All those PS1 and PS2 games that were on PS3, you no, could just... he won't do that. Move he won't over. do that. He, he <laughs> barely even wants PS4 mentioned. So he's definitely not going to be looking... He should do that. He, he should, but he won't. So uh, that's that. I also didn't know the P- all my PS2 games from PS4 just transferred to PS5 just super easy. Yeah, because they're, they've been remade. So that was They've cool. been remade to be playable on PS4, so... They great. technically count as PS4 games because they also have yeah. trophy support and all. So yeah, yeah. Um, I just wish War of the Monsters had a platinum trophy. Well, I mean, you can still <sighs> petition them for it. Who knows? Uh, <laughs> next, <laughs> maybe when I get to a hundred percent, I will. <laughs> Sony says PS5s will be in stock this year, and pigs will fly. Uh, this is by Jenny Lara for Silicon Era. If you didn't know, that was the cynicism in my voice from trying to pre-order or order. They've been they've been going in and yeah. out the past couple Good of days. Good luck with that. Good luck. I I clicked on one of the pages and it was it was sold out before the page could fully load. So, oops. Yeah. It's rare to see PS5 in stock at the moment. That's the understatement of the century. However, Sony took to Twitter in an attempt to offer an update on the current situation. It said that people will see the system in stores still in 2020. However, there are no exact dates for any PS5 restocks. It also announced this was its biggest console launch ever, but didn't provide exact figures going over how many systems have been shipped or sold. Um, Here's PS5's announcements, which seems designed to reassure people. We want to thank gamers everywhere 
for making the PS5 launch our biggest console launch ever. Demand for PS5 is unprecedented, so we wanted to confirm that more PS5 inventory will be coming to retailers before the end of the year. Please stay in touch with your local retailers. So I don't have one of those local retailers, so I won't be seeing any of the PS5. Um, I actually talked to my local retailer, or local game shop, uh, a few weeks ago, and they said, you know, buddy, maybe next year. <laughs> Who knows? Um... Yeah, will there be more in stock? Probably, but in a separate interview, Jim Ryan also said, or some executive at Sony said, we're sold out. We've, we've completely sold out of our stock. This is it. So um, that doesn't mean every unit has been sold to a customer, but every unit has been allocated to a shop. So uh, yeah, what's out there is out there. Good luck. Um, may the odds ever be in your favor. Hmm. Yeah. Um. Yeah. So, next story. We might see Mega Man Battle Network anniversary items outside Japan. This is uh, from Silicon Era and by Jenny Lana once again. There's a chance we could see Mega Man Battle Network anniversary merchandise outside Japan as well as inside the country. Capcom put out the call for partners on its official licensed business Mega Man series page in English. Simply put, a note at the bottom of the page said Capcom is looking for licensing partners for Mega Man Battle Network's 20th anniversary. From there, there are two options available. Both are fairly generic and don't reference Mega Man Battle Network in any way. Licensing Q&A goes through the process, confirming that in addition to items, campaigns, events, and tie-ups can be arranged. It also explained that the licensing process involves making a submission, Capcom discussing it, and a contract being signed, designs and products being checked, and issue of certificate being given before any merchandise is made. <laughs> this is now the second call for partners. Capcom originally began uh, Mega Man Battle Network anniversary plans in Japan back in May 2020 and when it first asked companies and blah blah blah. Uh, the last Mega Man Battle Network game was Mega Man Battle Network 6 which was available in Sidebeast Gregar and Sidebeast Falzar versions for the Game Boy Advance. It appeared in 2005 in Japan and 2006 worldwide and both games are available on the Nintendo Wii U Virtual Console. So are you looking forward to this? But Battle... I mean, this is was kind of the Mega Man I grew up uh -huh. with. Well, I had Mega Man X, uh, Mega Man X4. Uh-huh. But it was... Uh, I, I just, like... I could never grasp those games as a little kid. And then, you know, Mega Man Battle Network, I, uh, I played... Mega Man Battle Network 3 and Mega Man Battle Network 6. Wait, 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 wait. wait. And I really like wait, 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 wait. As a kid, you had trouble grasping a, a 2D platformer, but you were just fine with uh, a tactical not, RPG? Not that I had trouble grasping it. No, it was difficult. Like, I mean, like, it was really difficult for me. Huh. I mean, on a certain level, uh, an RPG is much easier to... Also... You know, I also watched a lot of the Mega Man NT Warrior anime on Kids at WB, so that probably helped I a little. I think that's <laughs> why. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm excited to see where this goes. Maybe a collection for Switch or something. Uh, we already have, like, several indies with, with that gameplay style. Like, Muse uh, Dash. One Step from Eden. And no, not Muse Dash. Uh, yeah, the, the one you just mentioned. No, Muse Dash is a yeah, yeah, game. Yeah, just, I just remembered that. <laughs> <laughs> um yeah one step from eden and uh i forgot what the other the other one is called like something exe um but yeah so it'll be cool if we can see ports of those games in the future let's see battle network indie game huh battle network inspired indie game the only thing i'm seeing is one step from eden uh, well, there's another one. I just forgot what it's called. I'm sure the indie indie pod fellows yeah, know. They probably should. Okay. Um, 
let's see. Next up is me. Square Enix work from home program will be a permanent and core program. This is by Jenny Lander for Silicon Era. The Square Enix work from home program is expanding into a permanent fixture for the company. On November 25th, 2020, it announced a permanent and core program that will allow all executive officers and employees to have the option of working at home on its site. Square Enix, Square Enix Holdings, and Luminous Production staff will be able to participate in it and become home-based employees starting on December 1st, 2020, with the option of a monthly status change or monthly status changes available as needed. In the announcement, Square Enix went over some of the goals and expectations from the program. For example, people will be given the option of being home-based or office-based depending on how many days they would work from either location and if their job would allow them to work from either situation. It's also said such a program had been considered for a while and 80% of employees surveyed in June 2020 found it worked for them. It noted it expects more diverse human resources and optimal work-life balance as benefits of it. This is a great first step towards better work conditions um i mean it, it would stand to reason that people will be more around their family um have a much easier time transitioning from work to rest without the need of commuting but yeah. there's also the, the danger uh-huh. of overwork because once you're in mm-hmm. a comfortable environment and there are no quote-unquote distractions you're more or less uh uh, you have the tendency to to keep being in work mode, which is what a lot mm-hmm. of people in a lot of countries have been experiencing during the pandemic. So I, I yeah. hope it doesn't negatively affect them. Uh, mm. But yeah, this is a, a good first step. Next up, we have Final Fantasy XIV Shadowbringers 5.4 patch. It's the largest content update patch yet. This is by Kazuma Hashimoto for Silicon Era. In an interview with Famitsu, director and producer of Final Fantasy XIV, Naoki Yoshida disclosed that the upcoming Shadowbringers 5.4 patch will be the largest content update patch yet. While the release date hasn't been decided as of yet, patch 5.4 is expected to arrive sometime in early December and with a plethora of new content. In the interview with Famitsu, Yoshida said that patch 5.4 has an unusual volume of content and went on to use the number of battle sounds for the upcoming patch as an example. You can click on article for full details. So uh, I'm guessing you'll have your hands full with mm. Final Fantasy XIV as well. I don't know if I'm going to go back to it mm-hmm. yet. Just because there's so much other stuff. But I will eventually, you know, because I have friends who play mm. it. Um, but... It's, oh, and also just a reminder that once 5.4 comes out, the Yokai Watch event will be over. C- so get those Yokai that, weapons that's, and, and That's minions. the most important bit, I'm sure. Well, you can't. Yes. Uh, I'm pretty much done with it just because the one other weapon I want, I have to do a lot more story stuff to get to those areas. Uh-huh. And like I said, I'm too busy with other games. Sure. So I'm just like, I, I have the weapons that, that I wanted the most, so it's fine. I have my Whisper Go mount. Yeah. Uh, next story. Monster Hunter World adds Mila Jovovich in movie crossover. Um, Monster Hunter World... Ad- oh, yeah. So, this is by Josh Tolentino over at Silicon Era. Monster Hunter is prepared to become THE Monster Hunter, also known as Hollywood actress Mila Jovovich, star of the Monster Hunter live-action film. Starting on December 4th, 2020... Capcom will be running a crossover event with the film within Monster Hunter World Iceborne. The event was announced by Capcom via a tweet on the official Monster Hunter account. The tweet included a teaser trailer showing Artemis, Jovovich's character, arriving in the new world and showing off her skills with her preferred weapon, the Dual Blades. The event will consist of two special quests featuring Artemis, who will be voiced by Jovovich herself. The quest will have unique rewards, most likely versions of the gear and weapons used by Artemis in the film. While this might be the first time Monster Hunter World has crossed over with itself, this isn't the first collaboration event for the game. Over the years, Monster Hunter World has run crossovers with brands like Horizon Zero Dawn, Resident Evil 2 Remake, Final Fantasy XIV, Street Fighter V, 
Devil May Cry, The, Rit- the Witcher, and Assassin's Creed. <laughs> Oof. Are you okay? I got something in my throat while I... Yeah, no, I just got something in my throat while I was saying okay. that. <laughs> it just, like, made it really hard to say the last one. <laughs> um, in addition to Jovovich as Captain Artemis, the Monster Hunter films... Oh, never mind. Uh, anyway. Anyway, that's happening. Um... So I'll probably go back to Iceborne and check that out. <laughs> oh, sure. You have time for that one, but not Final Fantasy. <laughs> well, it's it's a two events. 5.4 is a whole thing of, like, a whole big thing of content, and I'm not even in, like, Shadowbringers yet, dude. <laughs> also, uh, I don't know if it depends on how if, how accessible the event quest sure. is. Like, because I may not be far enough in Iceborne to access it. I don't know. Mm, I think it'll be accessible. Um, and then, uh, next story. Sakuna of Rice and Ruin shipments reach 500,000 worldwide. This is by Ishan Sadev for Silicon Era. Japanese indie hit Sakuna of Rice and Ruin has shipped 500,000 units worldwide, publisher Marvelous has announced. That number accounts for retail shipments and download sales across PC, Nintendo Switch, and PS4 by two-man indie studio Edelweiss took a total of five years to make we covered this uh last week but it is now the number one spot on the nintendo eShop bestsellers list oh that's a positive word of mouth over social media and cross promotion with the japanese agricultural sector <laughs> yeah so this thing just keeps selling yeah selling like hot rice cakes yeah that's a terrible one that's 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 <laughs> unforgivable <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, I couldn't say hotcakes. I mean, I think people would have gotten it, but uh, I digress. Uh, Whatever. <laughs> next, <laughs> too late too now. Late. Can't take it back. Yeah. Next up is Hyrule Warrior: Age of Calamity shipments and digital sales top three million. This is by Sal Romano for Gamatsu. Total worldwide shipments and digital sales for Hyrule Warriors Age of Calamity have exceeded 3 million units, Japanese publisher Kuei Tecmo announced. It is a new record for a single title in the Warrior series. Hyrule Warriors Age of Calamity launched for Switch on November 20th. A demo is also available. You can click on article for an overview on the video game. Um, So this is great. Um, I mean, it was to be expected because anticipation for Breath of the Wild 2 uh, is at a fever pitch. And this is probably going to be yeah. a, di- a decent chunk to satiate uh, satiate uh, people's appetites with. Uh, yeah, I was watching the ending because I don't plan on playing the game myself. And I was like, huh, well, that's interesting. I'm not going to say any spoilers, but... Zelda and timelines. That's all I'm saying. Okay. I think you spoiled pretty much everything in the Zelda universe by just saying that. Um, well, if you don't know, then <laughs> then that's your own fault. Yeah, sure. Um, <laughs> the only thing I'm worried about with this game is the performance issues. And um, yeah. a certain someone on Twitter has been hinting that, wink, wink, this, this might be the best thing uh, to... to to be combined with a maybe possible Switch Pro, but we'll see about that. Wait, who on Twitter was saying uh, that? Tiffany Treadmore, I think, or she must have been talking about some other Nintendo thing. But um, the, the the frame rate dips are just really apparent, and yeah, it it, it I mean, the Switch's hardware is a glorified uh, tablet running Nintendo software. It's, yes, it's mm-hmm. probably ill-equipped for whatever is coming out of next gen. Well, it's definitely yes. ill-equipped, but Nintendo is really going to have to do something because it, the gap is only going to get no, bigger. Besides that, I mean, we'd we'd like to say that um, having teraflops or extra uh, ROM memory or or hard drive space or processor power isn't necessary it's just art style and how you uh facilitate gameplay within that art style but at a certain point you're gonna have a logical constraint in how much you can put into a game and how much you can get out of a game so something's Mm got to give sooner or later and uh, i'm guessing this is the this is the limit 
and Nintendo has to mm-hmm. do something. Excuse me. So yeah. Um, well, I'm, I'm still looking forward to the game. I'll wait to see if come March there is news of a Switch Pro. Um, if not, I'll just buy it when it's cheaper, whenever that might be. Because uh, <laughs> it's a Nintendo game and they never go on sale. Uh, with well, with the with the weird exception, we get to that later. Yeah. Um, next up is Super Mario Maker will be delisted. Online services ended. This is by Jenny Lada for Silicon Era. It is the end of the line for Super Mario Maker on the Nintendo Wii U. Nintendo took the European product page to took to the European product page to reveal support and uh, digital sales for the game are coming to wait. To reveal support and digital sales for the game are coming to a close. Okay. It announced Super Mario Maker will be delisted on January 13, 2021. This will be followed by the end of online services on March 31st, 2021. Super Mario Maker bookmark site, which lets people browse uploaded courses, will also shut down on March 31st, 2021. It also took to Twitter to confirm the game is quote unquote ending. Um, you can click on the article for the tweet and some added context. Are they? Is Nintendo just gonna kill Mario on March thirty first or something? Okay. Um, as we've discussed previously, uh, March thirty first is probably when they're going to be transitioning from whatever they have now to a new and improved online service, and that may that would be nice. And that may or may not be including um. Um, streaming games, a virtual console, and uh, what's it called? The Switch Pro. Like, so hmm. March thirty first is just when the fiscal year ends. It's not. It's not that, that that it means that that Nintendo loses their license for Nintendo games or Mario games. It's just. It's, it's, oh, I didn't say they lose no, their license. No, no, I no. say they literally murder <laughs> <Yeah>. Mario. <laughs> something's happening. Something's brewing. You'll see soon enough. That's that's all I'll say. Yeah, we'll see in March yeah. or April. Maybe before, I think April. I think we'll see in April. Um. All right. So our last news story is Pokemon teases 25th anniversary celebrations. This is from Saramano over at Gamatsu. The Pokemon Company teased its Pokemon 25th anniversary celebrations today during the Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade in Manhattan today. The Pokemon franchise debuted with oh blah blah blah. Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade performance saw a troop of Pikachu dance to the original theme song of Pokemon in Herald Square and ended with Pokemon trainers unfurling a massive banner unveiling the official the official logo for Pokemon's 25th anniversary pictured above. It's a minimalist Pikachu with a 2 as one red cheek and a 5 as the other red cheek. This year also marked the 20th consecutive year in which giant a giant Pikachu balloon participated in the parade. The Pokemon Company will share more info about the very special upcoming celebration for Pokemon's 25th anniversary at a later date. So, Switch ports? I mean, uh, there have been... The rumor. Yeah, ones? there have been rumors that... That we talked about a few weeks ago? What was it? Diamond and Pearl will be getting remakes? It was the Diamond and Pearl remakes, and then there was the... Uh, I shared uh, the one about the red and about blue, the, yellow, and the port yeah. collections. Yeah, it was like, it was like red. It it would it was by, by version, so it was like, well, the first three, the second three, etc., etc. Red, et cetera, et cetera, red right? gold. No, it wasn't. It was cross generational, mm. but it was like red, red, uh, yeah, uh, red, silver, uh, sapphire, something okay. like that, or red and ruby or something because i think blue would go with sapphire i don't know um but like i said then i'd rather wait until they did a yellow crystal emerald Mm -hmm. you know what i mean no i don't know what you mean what do you mean like those are the best versions of those games Uh, they're the updated version i mean some people might prefer red and blue over yellow or gold and silver over crystal but Okay, you're crazy. Uh, I'm not crazy. I'm gonna call. I'm gonna call Cameron Hawkins for him to tell you that. No, I mean, you're allowed to like he what you found, like. That's friend, what I'm uh, saying. That's all I'm saying. Our friend just found his a uh, his uh, original copy of Pokemon Crystal and the box. Yeah. 
lucky, lucky man. <laughs> Definitely. Um, all right, so that's it for the news. We don't have any listener questions this week. I just wanted to say that now. But our main topic is just online Black Friday and Cyber Monday deals on 2020 Japanese games. Well, they don't have to be 2020, but just like deals on. Uh, because stay, stay, stay at home. You don't have to go anywhere. There's still a pandemic happening. You can just order stuff online. It's fine. I mean, that's that's uh, definitely a, a sage advice, especially now. Uh, you don't have to deal with lines. You don't have to deal with people. Well, you might have to deal with virtual lines, depending on what you're buying. But <laughs> most of the time, you should be fine. <laughs> um, so there is the one thing I wanted to highlight first is the digital Nintendo sale. Mm-hmm. And I'm just covering Japanese games. Uh, so Legend of Zelda Link's Awakening is on sale. Xenoblade Chronicles 2 and Torn of the Golden Country. Uh, Super Mario Party. Dark Souls Remastered. Uh, Monster Hunter Generations Ultimate. Mm-hmm. Dragon Quest Builders. Damon X Machina. Catherine Full Body. Layton's Mystery Journey. Shout out to level 5. Um... These are all Switch games, by the way. I don't think they have 3DS Black Friday sales, but maybe I'm wrong. Uh, SNK Heroines, but, you know, you don't have to buy that, as Jason pointed out. Don't buy SNK <laughs> games. Sushi Striker, The Way of Sushido. Travis Strikes Again, No More Heroes. Snack World, The Dungeon Crawl. Shout out to Level 5 again. Wonderful 101 Remastered. Nino Kuni, Wrath of the White Witch. Is Shantae a Japanese game? No. It's I, it's developed by Wave okay. Forward. Okay. Bloodstained Curse of the Moon 2. And there's some there's a couple other things too. I believe Sonic Mania, Sonic Forces. So you're just Sega Genesis collection. So are you just listing the Japanese games instead of No. Of, I, I well the stuff Valkyria Chronicles 4. I got Don't play Shining Resonance Refrain and it's not good. Okay. Dragon's Dogma and Monster Hunter wait, 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 wait. a bunch of Capcom games let, on sale I'm not going to list them because let, you're let, complaining about it let's, <laughs> let's rewind a bit what about Shining Resident Reframe that, that's that's not good the gameplay is boring okay the concept is cool gameplay is boring um, yeah no If like my suggestions are there's a bunch of Capcom games on sale I'm not going to list them all mm-hmm. but like uh, Monster Hunter Jason Generations Ultimate, Mega Man Zero Collection, Dragon's Dogma, a bunch of Resident Evil games, uh, Devil May Cry games, Mega Man X, Street Fighter. Um, I Personally, I actually got a... Uh, that's not on here. Oh, there it is. Uh, I got Tokyo Mirage mm-hmm. Sessions. That's a good pick, I guess. Um, it's one of the only, if not best, JRPGs on the Wii U. Um... And, yeah, and I was on Switch. Uh, most people back then were saying it was underplayed, so it's nice to see that it has yes. a second home. Yeah. There are also a bunch of de- there are a bunch of deals uh, everywhere. Uh, at Target, you can get uh, either th- uh, three months of Game Pass for twenty bucks or nine months of Game Pass for sixty bucks, which saves you seventy five dollars. That's a oh Game Pass that's a Ultimate. good deal. That's a really good deal. I I did so I, I jumped on that, but for whatever reason my the the link's not working. Like the link they gave me in the email once I once they sent me the digital mm-hmm. cards. Maybe there's just too much traffic there. Or did something. you confer with their customer service? Not yet, because this was right before I recorded okay. that, I was, that I was doing. Okay. But uh. You know, I'm gonna wait, wait to see if it like, you know, see if it fixes it itself, and then, and then if I, if the problem persists, obviously. Okay. Yeah, I, I, I hope so. Um. Uh, there's a bunch of deals on Amazon. Yeah, I should for like physical games. I should mention there <laughs> are also deals on storage, like um, SSDs. Yes. Um, um, external hard drives. Oh, I didn't see any SSD. I didn't see any external SSD deals. Yeah, there are. Um, I was looking for those. Uh, Western Digital Black has one for one hundred and twenty dollars. Uh, that's the oh. five hundred gigabyte model. 
Uh, that doesn't. I feel like I I can get more for. I've seen more for less though. On an SSD, I highly doubt that. Yeah, on an on an external SSD. Yeah. I highly doubt that. I've seen like, I've seen at least a one. I've seen a one terabyte external SSD for like a hundred or around the same price as the other uh -huh. one. As a as the one you're talking about. Nah, I'm sure I, I have. don't believe it. I know an I have. SSD. I know nah, I have. Yes. Nah. I need proof. I need proof. Bring me proof. Bring me pictures of Spider-Man on my desk. Bring later. <laughs> pictures of Spider-Man. I can't get you... Well, I mean, I did play Miles Morales, so I can't get you pictures of Spider-Man. <laughs> okay. Um, I mean, um, maybe there's a deal somewhere, but I'm telling you, SSDs are not as cheap as standard um, external yeah, hard drives. Yeah, no, I know that. And yeah. these are... Um, the Western Digital Black ones are quote-unquote gamer ssds and hard drives for uh, your console of choice um mm -hmm. i mean 500 gigabytes is expensive at 117 dollars but it's in an ex um, enclosure you can get half of for an internal ssd um yeah so therein lies the rub i guess um, um. Silicon Era has a number of like here are the best deals on this system like on PC and Xbox and next gen and Nintendo Switch. I mean you have this. So they have all those lists. You have the Steam Autumn. I'm not gonna list them all because it's a lot. You have the Steam Autumn Sale. You have fanatical yeah. flash deals. Uh, Green Man Gaming. Um, Final Fantasy 14 expansions are on sale on the Square Enix website. Also on. Steam, I guess. Yeah, Steam also yes. has it on sale. Um, yeah. Um, I'd say I saw something with a code vein for like ten bucks. I don't know how good, good or bad code vein is, but like, if you're interested, code, in that. code vein is pretty much as people have described it: anime Dead Souls and anime Dark Souls. Oh yeah, Dark Souls. Dead Souls. Dead Souls. Is, yeah, Dead Souls is yeah, anime <laughs> Dark Souls, but the thing that rubs me kind of the wrong way is that it's a bit on the easy side but hey maybe that's what you're looking for in a souls I was, so i was reading about that and people were saying no there are still some difficulty spikes sure but it's like, overall it's very easy <laughs> compared to bloodborne or dark Souls. it's very easy cool i mean um as far as soulsborne go that one and Jedi Fallen Order are on the easier side. Of course, Jedi Fallen Order can be adjusted um, according to what parameters you want. And you have Lords of Fallen, but that's easy yeah. because you can cheese the game. But you know, that's that's, yeah. that's something. We also got like stuff like Persona Five Royal for twenty bucks at Best Buy. Yeah, uh, um, the PlayStation Store also has Black Friday deals. Uh, yes, Mike, there are digital Black Friday deals, physical Black Friday um, deals. It's a it's a smorgasbord of deals. The one thing I see a lot of people um, recommending um, because it's getting s not enough love is thirteen no Wars? thirteen Sentinels Ages oh. Rim on PlayStation, <laughs> and um, if you have a Switch, uh, Paradise Killer. Um, which yeah, isn't. I meant to try the demo. Which for isn't that. specifically a Honestly. Japanese game, but it's kind of influenced by definitely inspired JoJo yeah. Bizarre Adventure and Danganronpa and the uh, virtuous virtual uh, virtuous last reward yeah. games. So uh, yeah, zero yeah, zero escape. Get on that. Um, if I had to recommend anything um, from the PSN, it would be. Uh, 13 Sentinels Aegis Rim. I haven't played it myself, but uh, going off of every review I've read or listened to, I highly recommend that. Um, from the eShop, what would I recommend? Um, Digimon Story Cyber Sooth Complete Edition. No. Uh, oh, I recommend that. <laughs> let's see. Uh, Mario Party is always fun. D Dark yeah. Souls, if you're looking for a challenge. Uh, I don't know. Does it run that well on Switch? I don't which know. Which one? The there's only that one, which, right? Which one are you talking about? Part Dark yeah, Souls. Yeah, it runs, it runs Dark fine. Souls. It runs on a steady f thirty frames per second, like okay. a lock. No, I just didn't know a lock thirty frames per second. I I know, I really know, cause I I uh, watched two digital foundry videos back to back on it, so I know. <laughs> um, hmm. let's see. 
what else? Dragon Quest Builders is a really fun game, but this is just a sale on Dragon Quest Builders 1. You might want to wait on Dragon Quest yeah. Builders 2 because it has, yeah. has expanded Two features. Is a bit better. Um, 2 also has multiplayer, but unfortunately, like Animal Crossing is pretty limited. Yeah. Uh, let's see what else would make for a good game. Uh, not Japanese, but Hades. Um, get on that. Um, oh, I just remembered something, but I'll end the podcast with it because it's funny. Okay, wait, wait, wait. wait. <laughs> Let me look. Um, I, I'd, I'd um, recommend Valkyria Chronicles. Um, yeah, that's a good one. I mean, I haven't played it, but I've seen my friend play it, and it always looks good. I've played it, and it's so satisfying. Um, and okay. characters from Skies of Arcadia are yeah. in it. Um, Okami HD. Um, I also recommend that. Uh, I should say uh, Valkyria Chronicles uh, 4 is on sale as as well as 1 um, on the eShop. Uh, mm. I mean, you have the Resident Evil, the Devil May Cry, the Mega Mans. Um, there are known quantities. I'm not telling you anything new. Uh, if you so choose, <laughs> there is a sale on the My Hero Once Justice games on eShop and Jump Force on, on note, PSN. Yeah. <laughs> and Jump Force is 13 bucks at Best Buy. Yeah. So if you're looking for... So if you really want to play Jump Force for some reason... <laughs> I mean, people like the game. <laughs> I've seen it in my mention. People like it. Yeah, I know. I saw that too. I mean, I'm, I'm really at the point where I'm going to buy those games and write something positive about them. Yeah, no. No, I'm at the point... Yeah, I might do that too, but I want to wait until like there's a full edition if that ever happens there is a full edition oh there's a complete edition that'll have all like the future characters yeah on playstation at the moment oh. it's on sale for 23 dollars if i'm not mistaken uh, i think i'm gonna wait until it's cheaper than that <laughs> cheaper than 23 dollars come on man well i also just bought all that other sure stuff, so. sure <laughs> Okay. Um. Yeah. And those have been my recommendations. Um. I think for myself, I am going to be buying Tokyo Mirage Sessions. Oh yeah. Um. Probably also my hero. <laughs> oh no. Yeah. Um. <laughs> and you heard it here first. Folks. And maybe Dark Souls Remastered, but I'm I'm not sure about that one. Okay. Because I have <laughs> such FOMO for not having Demon Souls on PlayStation Five at the moment. So, right. I've just been watching my friends play that. Like I said, I have a lot of friends streaming that, and I'm like, yeah, I have too many other games, and I feel like I probably wouldn't like it as much as Bloodborne. And I also have Neo Two, and that's close enough to a Souls game. For I me. mean, you could still try it. It's it's probably different enough. Yeah. I wasn't the biggest fan of Dark Souls Three. I mean, it's it's not Dark Souls. That's that's no, I know, but this is like proto Dark Souls, so I feel like I might like it less. Uh, I'm not sure about that. Look, I'd rather spend money on a game that I know I uh-huh. like than a game that I'm not sure I'll like. Also, you can't rent. If I could still rent games from Redbox, that's what I'd do. Sure. Um, but that's not an option anymore. Yeah. So I think that's it for the recommendations yes i i probably have others that i'm forgetting I mean, there's but, also uh, nino, N- nino kuni on switch yeah um, yes but yeah that's um, it let us know in the comments if you found any good black friday or cyber monday deals or uh what i don't know <laughs> i forgot what else i was gonna say yes tell it. us what you found let us know how you tell enjoyed you it found. um yeah, we, we, we're curious. We're really curious. Okay, so what I so what I forgot was that there's a there's a movie for a new kaiju movie that I forgot to put in the J list. Uh huh. <laughs> Clifford the Big Red Dog. Yeah, no, get out, get out, <laughs> get out. <laughs> hey, he's technically a kaiju. You can't. It, no, I'm not counting it as a kaiju. He, get out. He is a small kaiju, but he is technically a kaiju. Nope, 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 nope. Yes. Nope. Yes. No. yes. This is yes. where I draw the line. <laughs> Search your feelings, you know it to be true. This is where I draw the line. <laughs> <laughs> Do it. <laughs> okay. Um, no. I think that's he, been it for this week. <laughs> um, yeah. Do you have anything to add? Um, we, we'll have a, we're supposed to have a guest next mm-hmm. week. 
uh, who is lovely. Um, and uh, we're working on some end of the year stuff, and we'll have more news on that later. Uh, because we're still setting the timing of certain things up. So we'll probably announce all that either on the last and on our last podcast of the year or maybe on the next podcast depends on what happens um but as always uh stay safe uh wash your hands wear a mask social distance all that uh make sure you don't fill up too much on food i don't know (laughs) i mean enjoy your food or do it's been enjoy it's been a tough year enjoy yourself but yeah. within reason, yeah. know your limits. Don't go drinking too much. Make sure to make sure to hang out with friends virtually if possible. Just to, you know, it's it's a nice thing to do. Yeah. Have fun out there, people. Um, good night and good luck. This has been. And always remember that Clifford is a kaiju. Yeah, I reject that. I veto it. Uh, <laughs> objection. <laughs> this has been Errol. This has been Jason, and we're out. Matane.